Hello, and shalom to my brothers and sisters and Master Yeshua the Messiah who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Brother Nick here, and today is the 21st day of the 8th month on Yahweh Elohim's solar calibrated, non-Gregorian, 364-day calendar of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Qumran, the Zadok Priest, the Torah and the Prophets, the Book of Jubilees, and the Book of Enoch. The Gregorian equivalent is November 8th, 2022, and I'm back here on the island of Cyprus. This video is about the Takufa, Dead Sea Scroll 4Q324D, and the 364-day calendar. In addition, I'll be talking about the four days of the season per Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394, because the four days of the season and the four turns of the year to Kufa are related. Here is the word to Kufa and it means coming around a circuit of time or space, a turning, a circuit. And there are four places where this word is used and two of them I just want you to note is actually to Kufa Hashanah means the turn of the year. This one says year's end. That's actually incorrect. This is the end of the year, but it's actually the turn of the year. The English translators did not get that correct. So I'll be talking about that more in my next video. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Takufa. And this is a screenshot right here of my playlist on the official 364-day calendar, the non-Gregorian calendar of the Dead Sea Scrolls. You need to check this out. If you're using Gregorian days of the week, it is a false calendar. This concept of the days of the week resetting upon the solar cycle of the spring equinox, that's not a foreign concept. 2,000 years ago, the Babylonian lunar calendar, every month, the days of the week reset upon a new moon. So every new moon, the days of the week, the weekdays, reset for the new lunar month. And a lot of the calendars, the days of the week reset. So with that being said, it's not a foreign concept. But you need to watch my playlist if you're not familiar. There are many false versions of the 364-day calendar because they fail to understand that the calendar does not use the Gregorian days of the week. They still use the false Gregorian days of the week and the false Saturday Sabbath, and they make their calendar fit according to the Gregorian days of the week. Even the, the translator of the complete Dead Sea Scrolls in English, man, a translator named Geza Verms, who translated all the Dead Sea Scrolls, he even uh, failed to understand that the Gregorian days of the week are false days of the week. So he put this false presupposition into his interpretation of the calendar. In his commentary, he inserts uh, the Gregorian days of the week into the calendar scrolls which is his commentary, and thus created a roadblock uh, to the true calendar and to the true Sabbath day. You can see here 4Q394, and he says Sabbath equals Sunday, second day, Monday, first day, Sabbath, Sabbath, Sunday. So he's using the Gregorian days of the week to try to explain the calendar, and it can't be done like that because Yahweh Elohim's days in heaven his days aren't the days of the Gregorian days of the week, which came from the planetary days of the week that Rome adopted, and it's just a long problem, big problem. That has everybody still in Babylon, if you watch this video, about the 354-day uh, Babylonian calendar and the lunar Sabbath, because it's a solar Sabbath. And here are a bunch of my videos, the false Gregorian seven-day week and the last Sabbath, the solar Sabbath, which is the heavenly Sabbath, in heaven, that we are supposed to use the sun, the great sign on the earth of the spring equinox, to uh, establish the days of the week and sync our calendar here on our, our calendar and our days of, of the week here on earth up to the calendar that's going on in heaven. And then this this is a really new video. That's a good one, and also this one from a little bit about two months ago. So recently, I saw this in my Facebook feed uh, about an article regarding a new de newly deciphered set Dead Sea Scroll fragment. 
And this is the actual article of the, in the Journal of Biblical Literature, a newly reconstructed calendar scroll from Qumran. And I went through this article and December 2017, there was a newly reconstructed Dead Sea Scroll regarding the 364 day calendar that wasn't published back in the 70s or whenever it was they got the other ones done, but was published just recently, five years ago now. And this newly reconstructed calendar scroll provides insight as to three locations of the four tekufa, the four turns of the biblical calendar. So I'm gonna be taking a look at that in this video, and I'm gonna be using this new information in regards to my published calendar. Prior to this scroll that was recently translated and published, this reconstructed scroll for Q324D, there has not been any text that specifically identifies the exact placements, locations of the four takufas. So the four turns of the year. And that is something that had to be like guesstimated basically. So in light of this newly reconstructed scroll and me seeing this information, I went to my placement of the four takufas compared to what the Dead Sea Scrolls and my day was one day premature. So I'm making this video to refine and update my calendar. And just so you know, if you've been on my calendar, this new information does not affect the integrity of my original and correct solar calibrated non-Gregorian version of the calendar. The calendar that I've published for the last five years has been accurate as to the days, dates of the year, Sabbaths, and new months and festivals that has all been accurately placed. But I had the Takufa marked on the day prior, one day earlier than when it occurs, which isn't a biggie because it is just to understand how the calendar works. But I'm making this video to update that and to share that with everybody out here on how the calendar works. So on my published solar calibrated non-Gregorian 364 day calendar, I based my intuitive understandings to place this Takufa to be on the four intercalary days of the calendar year. And the four intercalary days happen on, on every third month. The, that third month that has a intercalary day at the end. So it's like the 31st day of the month. So the 31st day happens in the third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth months. Right here in red is where I had them marked on this day. So here is my spreadsheet style of the calendar with the biblical anniversaries. And as you can see close up, I call it intercalary day of the seasons, Takufa, and then I give it into the Strongs. And here you see it, the day right before the first day of the fourth month, the day before the first day of the seventh month, the day before the first day of the tenth month, the day before the spring equinox. That's how I originally understood where to place the Takufa the watchers of the season would happen on the night of these nights. I figured that it was on this day, but that's actually incorrect. The watchers, according to Enoch 74, the watchers of the seasons are on these days, but the watchers are stars that come out at night, so the following day would be the day of the season as they're looking for that day. So again, my placement of the Takufa was one day premature. So again, rather than it being on, on the 31st day of every third month, the Takufa is to be placed on the day after. So instead of it being here on what is the 31st day of the third month, the Takufa should have been on the first day of the fourth month. Instead of being it on what would have been the 31st day of the sixth month, should have been on the first day of the seventh month. Instead of on the 31st day of the ninth month, it should have been on the first day of the 10th month, and regarding the 31st day of the 12th month, I believe that this is the day of the sun right here. So it's going to be on the following day after the day of the sun, after the turning of the year. And I'll be explaining that a little bit here in this video and also hopefully in my next video that I plan on putting out. So here you can see it close up. So instead of here on the 31st day of the third month, it should be on the first day of the fourth month. Instead of the 31st day of the sixth month, it should be on the first day of the seventh month. Instead of it being on the 31st day of the ninth month, it's on the 
first day of the 10th month. And the newly reconstructed calendar scroll 4Q324D does not say when the Takufa is after the 31st day of the 12th month. It could be on the following day, which is the day of the spring equinox, but I doubt it. That's the day of the sun. And the year does not turn, doesn't have that revolution, it doesn't have that turning until the day after the spring equinox is observed, which is the great sign upon the earth. So I believe and understand that it should be on the first day of the first month, just like all of the others. And when it's on the first day of the first month, because that's the beginning of this ecclesiastical or the calendar year, this calendar year, calendar months 1 through 12, it's called Takufa Hashana. Hashana is year, Takufa is the turn of the year. So the year just turned, it had its revolution, and it has to go all the way through, through the spring equinox, as I would understand, to turn there. And it's the turning of the year. The year had turned. It, the year turned, and that's it. So in my next video series, as I say, I'm going to be talking about the two different Takufa Hashanas recorded in the scriptures that proves that there are two different 364-day calendars. I've already done a video about that, about the two 364-day calendars. There's two cycles that are going on that are 364 days, one starting on the first day of the first month, that is months 1 through 12, and then another calendar, which is tied to the Shemitah year that I'll be talking about as well, that happens on the first day of the seventh month, and that's months 7 through 6. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ending with the 31st day of the sixth month. That's the last day of that cycle. Then you have uh, the Takufa Hashana again. And surprisingly, Takufa Hashana is related to Rosh Hashana, as I'll be hopefully making a video on and explaining that, yeah, willing, I live and I can do that. So I will be going into this video on 4Q324D, showing you in the text that it does place the Takufas on the first day of the fourth month, the first day of the seventh month, and the first day of the tenth month. And I'll be showing you that there, and I'll be showing you the word Takufa in the scrolls. Dead Sea Scroll Calendar 4Q324D, this is it. You're looking at it right here. These are the fragments of the calendar that was reconstructed. Right here in red is the words Takufa, and the word Takufa appears three times in the reconstructed document. Here's one of the words Takufa in column two. Column three of this document, and Takufa is here. Here is column four, and Takufa is there. And now I'll show you these columns with the reconstructed text so you can identify where the word Takufa is. Now you're looking at column two again. Here's it translated here, and it's missing the hay at the end. You can see it says Takuf. For those of you that are unaware or not familiar with the Dead Sea Scrolls, a lot of scrolls were very fragmented like this, where there's just a little bit of text and they had to be reconstructed. To reconstruct the text, the uh, people that were working on the scrolls would try to comprehend what the text is saying and fill it in based on ideas from other text. So this is what you would call a highly fragmented scroll and a very reconstructed text. Not all Dead Sea Scrolls were like this. There are Dead Sea Scrolls that are chunks and large portions of text that is not fragmented with very little fragments. Here in column three, here's the full word to Kufa. So this column of the scroll contains more fragments and more words than the previous uh, column two. And this one has the full spelling of the word Takufa. That's what the reconstructors identified. And it gives us more, I more identification. There's more words here that we can place to understand how the calendar works. Obviously, they're using the temple scroll, comparing this to the temple scroll, because that has a lot of the dates of the Festival of Oil. So in this reconstruction, in the fragments, they have the word for oil, which is Shemem. They have that missing the last letter there, so they're able to identify the festival of oil. For the seventh month, they were able to identify the first part of the word of that, 
And then they had Yom 4, day 4, Tekufa. On the 4th of it, a Sabbath, 10th in it, Yom Kippurim, the word for atonement. So here is the 7th month, and now we'll go ahead and see how this column of the scrolls aligns up with the calendar. So it says the 7th month is implied right here uh, is on day four and as you can see it's the first day of the seventh month the beginning of the seventh month is on day four which this year is the gregorian monday and then takufa so that the first day of the seventh month is a takufa and then on the fourth of it which is speaking of the seventh month that's implied by the author that's his commentary sabbath so the fourth day of the seventh month is a sabbath and then 10th in it, Day of Atonement. So here's the 10th of it, it's the Day of Atonement. And then on the 11th, it, Sabbath. So here's the 11th day of the seventh month. And the 11th day of the seventh month is on a Sabbath. And then the 15th of it, the Feast of Tabernacles. That's not part of the scroll, but the Feast of, and we know it's the Feast of Tabernacles. So this scroll, there's enough here in this scroll, there's enough meat left on the bone in this scroll to understand that where the Takufa is and to have the correct location. But as you can see, a lot of these, uh, the information in here checks out on the calendar. But with this, we know that the Takufa is on the first day of the seventh month, which is the fourth day of the week. So this is how we know the correct placement of the Takufa. It's not on the 31st day of the previous month, but on the day following the, every 31st day. So at the beginning of each quarter, which is also the beginning of each season. So here is column four, and this is the third location of the word Takufa in this document, the calendar scroll 4Q. 324D, and it is the full word to Kufa. It's in here. Now, this scroll, there's a large section of the scroll missing. If you see this white space right here, so this is why the scribes, they put, when they reconstructed this, they put all of these dots here to show that there is a big space between. Now, this column, column four, picks up right where column three left off. They imply this because they see the first part of the word Sukkot right here, tabernacles, okay, um, and then on, which is right here. The first part right here is tabernacles. So they're thinking that this is where the other one left off. And the text that's in the brackets is text that is reconstructed. And when you see things in parentheses, it is the scribe's commentary describing what that is so we see tabernacles here they say they look like they have the word for eight and then go ahead and skip down here to line nine there's a lot more text right here so day three additional is additional and then on the tenth they have the word for the tenth there not on the first day but the tenth and month is implied to kufa day Four, Yom 4. So on the first day of the 10th month is the Tekufa, which is the weekday number 4. And on the 4th of it, which is the 10th month, implied Sabbath. So here is the 10th month. And now we're going to go ahead and look at lines number 9 and 10 of this column here. Okay, the first day of, that is missing. But we know it's the first day of because we know how the calendar is set up. It does have the word the tenth, and month is implied. That's commentary of the scribes that reconstructed the text. And we have the word takufa, and then day four, that text is there in line 10, which is Yom Arba. So we have, and Yom Arba, we know that the first day of the tenth month is always on the fourth day of the week. And that is when the Takufa is. The Takufa is on the first day of the 10th month. And then it says on the fourth in it, the fourth day of the 10th month, that is the 10th month is implied, Sabbath. And that is right here.
So that is correct, and we know the placement of the Takufa of the 10th month. The four days of the season of Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394. So in this part of the video, I'm going to be talking about the four days of the season. I'm going to identify the correct location and placement of the days of the season, the four days of the season. Each season is 91 days. So the day of the season is the first day of that season. And it turns out, according to Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394, that they are going to happen on the same day as the taku for the turn of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you, the, the correct location of the four days of the season, and show how they are related to the Takufa, and then I'm going to go ahead and revisit my calendar. In Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394, it shares with us where the season is complete regarding the third month. The 28th of the third month is a Sabbath, the first of the Sabbath, which means the first of the week, and the second day and the third day are to be added, and the season is complete 91 days. And then you have the first day of the fourth month, which is the Memorial Day. That's a Memorial Day of Noah. So look at, for the season to be complete after 91 days, that means the day of the season which is the beginning of the next season, is the following day. And that is the first day of the fourth month. So in addition to incorrectly having the four Takufas on the 31st days of the calendar year, I also incorrectly had the four days of the season on the, 31st, on the four 31st days of the year. So by reading this, I realized that it was incorrect and I was off a date prematurely. Again, it does not change the integrity of the calendar, the solar calibrated calendar. I have the days of the week correctly, I have the Sabbath days correctly, I have the new months correctly, I have the feast days correctly. The only thing that changes is that this day of the season is going to go from being the 31st day of the third month to the correct day, which is the first day of the the fourth month. So these first four lines are still speaking of the third month. On the 28th of it, of the third month, is a Sabbath. And as you can see, here's the third month I have pulled up here, and the 28th of it is a Sabbath. The first of the Sabbath, or the first of the week, okay, the first of it, and the second day, and the third are to be added, right here, First day, second day, and the third day. First day, second day, and third day of the week are to be added, and the season is complete 91 days. So the season is complete with this day. Remember, month one was 30 days. Month two was 30 days. Month three is 31 days. So the season is complete 91 days. And the following day is the first day of the fourth month. Right here, first day of the fourth month. And that is not only the Memorial Day of Noah, but it is also the day of the season of summer. So not only is the first day of the fourth month a takufa, it's a turn of the year, it's also the day of the season. There are four intercalary days of the season. The seasons are 91 days long. And so now that we have just this one little segment of Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394, we can now determine to place all four of the days of the seasons because we know that the season quarters are 91 days, which means that the first day of the first month, the day after the spring equinox, is the day of the season of spring because the season is 91 days long. And if it was on the spring equinox, it would be 92 days long would be that quarter, and that can't be. So 91 91, 91, the first day of each 91 day quarter is the day of the season. So the day of the season per Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394 is on the first day of the fourth month. It's the day of the season of summer. And the first day of the seventh month is the day of the season of fall. And the first day of the 10th month is the day of the season of winter. And the first day of the 
first month is the day of the season of spring. We have to have the sign until we know that the year has turned. So that is why we wait for that sign. We see the sign. And then once we have the sign, the great sign on the earth for Jubilees 2-9, we now can calibrate out the year. The following day becomes the first day of the first month. It's the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah. It is the turn of the year, Tekufa Hashanah. And then we start the 364 day race all over again because the son came out of his chamber as a bridegroom to run his race. His race is 364 stations, which are 364 days. Then he goes back into his chamber, which is his tabernacle, which is the day of the spring equinox, and he comes back out to run that circuit again. And that's just how it works. So here are some screenshots of the spreadsheet version of my calendar. And as you can see, just like I had the Takufa on the 31st day of the month, I also had the day of the season, the four intercalary days, which are the four 31st days of the year. So instead of the day of the season being here on the 31st days of the year, it should be on the day following with the exception of the 364th day of the calendar year the day following is the spring equinox so the the uh the day of the season is on the following day of the spring equinox so it, the season is 91 days so the takufa is on the same day as the day of the season which is also on memorial days of noah so upon that new information, I'm happy to correct myself. Always want to be correct, not wrong. And in this case here, I have already made the updates to my official Enoch Calendar Biblical Anniversary spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet version of the calendar, it has been updated to reflect uh, scroll Dead Sea Scroll 4Q324D and also uh, uh, Dead Sea Scroll 4 Q394. So as you can see here, this is still the intercalary day. It's the 31st day of the month. It's the implied 31st day of the month. And so that is no longer a takufa. It is no longer a day of the season. Rather, the day of the season is here on the first day of the first month. Right here is the day of the spring season. And it's also a takufa right here. So not only do I have that for the first day of the first month, but also I also have it on the first day of the fourth month. It's the intercalary day of the season is the 31st day. The first day of the fourth month, it is the day of the season of summer, and it's also a takufa. Down here in the first day of the seventh month, as you can see, the 31st day, the implied 31st day is the intercalary day. That is right here. It's no longer a day of the season. It's no longer a takufa. Rather, the, day, the first day of the seventh month is the day of the season of fall, and it's also the takufa. And then again, here in the tenth month, the first day of the tenth month, it's the day of the season of winter, and it's also a takufa, while the day previous remained the intercalary day, the, 30, the implied 31st day of the month. So that's updated, and my next year's calendar PDFs will all reflect these changes and will be all updated. So again, the integrity of my calendar, the days of the week, the dates, the days of the week, the Sabbaths, the new months, the festivals for the last five years, it's all been correct and correct going forward. It was just labeling these days or identifying these days and labeling them correctly labeling the takufa correctly and the day of the season correctly i was incorrect on that and i've made those changes now going forward so hallelujah have a better understanding on the four turns of the year which are the days of the season so there you have it brothers and sisters we have now now we can re, now that we can refine our calendar was off just a pinch. The placement of that day was off just a pinch. Instead of it being on the 31st day, the four 31st days of the month, it was on the day following. So hallelujah that we have this information. And now we can adjust our, our now we can have the correct day of the Takufa 
and better understand and better understand the calendar. And in my next video, I hope to talk about the two Takufa Hashanas, like Rosh Hashanah, but Takufa Hashanah. And be, I say that because Takufa Hashanah of the four times the word Takufa appears in four verses in the Tanakh. We have it here in Exodus 34, 22. It says, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end, should be at the turning of the year. Okay? Tekufa Hashanah, the turning of the year. And then here in 2 Chronicles 24, 23, came to pass at the end of the year, should say at the turning of the year. Now I'm going to be talking about the two Tekufa Hashanahs, and what's interesting, and the two 364-day calendar years, because this one, the Feast of the Inn Gathering, that's Sukkot, that's at the turning of the year, which is on one calendar, and then Second Chronicles 24, 23 is talking about when the kings go out for war, which happens in the first month. So in my next video, I hope to talk more about that. I'll be a, It's going to be almost like a part two to my previous video that I did before on Rosh Hashanah and the two 364-day calendar years, but it'll be a lot more in-depth as this is new information to me, new understanding to me, and I'm sharing with it to, with, with you for free. Freely I receive, freely I give, hallelujah, and I'm signing off, and shalom to all my brothers and sisters out there who have the testimony of Master Yeshua and guard his commandments, shalom to you.